Welcome, everyone. We are the many, and we are here every Wednesday together with you to lament and pray. This week, with the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and the protests and violence that has followed, we have been lurched back to remember that our story of racism and violence, prejudice and bigotry still goes on. It has not taken a break for the COVID-19 pandemic. It's this racism and the events of the past weeks that will be our focus as we lament together. Our special guest is Waltrina Middleton, an extraordinary performance poet and activist who is the executive director of Chicago's Community Renewal Society, a faith-based organization that has been working to eliminate race and class barriers since 1882. We invite you to participate with us in any way that is best for you. All of us and the many will be here sharing in the comments. We invite you to share your laments and your prayers in the comments with us. Let's begin with the words of Scripture. A reading from Jeremiah 31.15 and Mark 15.34. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Join us now in this gathering litany. We come here tonight with hearts aching. We come with anger and with hurt. We come with eyes opened wider and filled with tears. We do not want to be here. God give us the strength not to turn away. We come here tonight reminded of Dr. James Cone's words that Jesus died like a lynched black victim in torment on the tree of shame. The crowds shout, crucify him, anticipated the white mobs shout, lynch him. In Jesus' final cry from the cross, my God, why have you forsaken me? Tonight we can also hear the echoes of George Floyd's words, I can't breathe as he called out for his mama, while a white police officer kept his knee on his neck for almost nine minutes. We do not want to hear this. God, give us the strength to listen and not turn away. We come here tonight unable to ignore the lynching that still goes on in America. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery are just some of its most recent victims. As Dr. King said, it's not enough to ask who killed these people. We must ask what killed them. We do not want to be here. God, give us the strength not to turn away. 
God, give us the courage to refuse to be comforted. As Dr. William Barber says, hope is in the morning, hope is in the tears. We cannot try to hurry up. We must hear the screams, feel the tears. These wounds are too much, these deaths are too much, but we must refuse to be comforted and refuse to turn away. This is the only way that change happens. We do not want to be here. God, give us the strength to refuse to be comforted and not turn away. My dead black body. When someone puts a bullet into my flesh or chokes the life out of me for whatever reason, there will still be a great many people who love me but sit silently while I'm portrayed as someone who doesn't deserve due process or an independent investigation. They will deny and minimize accusations that there are failures and bias in our systems, suggesting my death somehow what I deserved. My killer will be regarded as a hero or just doing his job and probably win an award or at least be awarded another job in a different location. The media will find a picture of me in a hoodie or at least looking menacing and tell people about every bad thing I ever did. There will be experts to talk about how my weight or poverty killed me more than someone's actions in my life. My family will be told that my death is a homicide and that no one will be responsible, so deal with it. The dirt and misdeeds of my family and people who support me will also be used to justify my death. Christians will call my story too political and see that as cause to stay out of it, unless it can be used as a platform for traditional values. Those who stand up for me will be portrayed as the problem with this country and shamed for creating division. Then a politician or a news commentator will make my death about taxes, black on black crime, and the war on Christianity. Then the news cycle will continue. Another dead black body will take my place and the story will repeat. Hopefully my name will get added to the list of people who were killed with the same outcomes. Maybe it will matter 50 years from now, or maybe it'll be forgotten. And a nameless picture of my dead body will be used to illustrate someone's slideshow during Black History Month. This has been the narrative for dead black bodies, and unless someone like you commits to changing that, it will continue. I refuse to be silent. I don't know how it's working out for you, but my life, my death, and my legacy depend on it. Silence equals consent. Black lives matter. Now is the time to figure out what will you do? I wrote this on December 15th, 2014. Why have you 
forsaken us Where have you gone? Why have you forsaken us? How can we go We are here together to lament because the Bible tells us God hears our cries and God wants to gather us together like a mama gathers her chicks in her nest. We are here because the prophet Hosea called us to break that ground and sow it with justice. And our tears can water the seeds of justice. So we invite you to lament along with us. You can do that silently, or you can also share your laments in the comment section if you like. At the end of each lament, one of us will say, Why have you forsaken us? And we invite all of you to respond, Where have you gone? Let's begin. God, we cry out to you for George Floyd and Rihanna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey, knowing these are not the only names. These are just the most recent ones that have made the news. We cry out to you, God. Why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? God, we cry out to you, because in the land of the free, there are so many who feel caught and caged. As we watch the anger flame on our streets, we lament the vast systems of oppression within education, health care, and economics, and within our police, judicial, and prison systems that have devastated black and brown communities and have caused so much anguish, iniquity, and injustice for so long. We cry out to you, God. Why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? Oh God, Tonight we cry out to you and say it out loud. The white supremacy that's so deeply embedded in our country, in our own hearts and minds and lives, is a drug so many of us are addicted to and can't imagine living without. And those of us who are white try to be nice about it while we keep holding on to it. Like Amy Cooper, we say, I am not a racist instead of coming clean, admitting our sin, and changing. We are scared and lost and feel like addicts who can't stop. We cry out to you. Why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? God, we cry out to you because there's fear and despair and hatred everywhere. And all we hear from our president and so many of our government leaders are the sounds of people trying to hold on to power and the way things are. It makes us sick. We cry out to you, why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? cry out to you because we are still in the middle of this COVID pandemic and it's taking the lives of people we know and people we don't 
all over the globe. This is not over, no matter how much we wish it was. We still can't gather in person without fear, and we want our lives to get back to normal, and we're afraid they never will. We cry out to you, why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? Helicopters in the air, triggering my fears. What's next comes the rubber bullets, piercing my body like they pierced Jesus. Crying out for mama to behold thy son. I can't breathe, they don't even need guns. Castrate our bodies from the lynching trees. Cut off my lungs, 10 minutes with his knees. Crying out for mama, I can't breathe. Hands in his pockets with a grin on his face. Resentment for my race as my life slips away. Cameras recording. America don't care. Black lives don't matter. Even when our murders are broadcast on air. Evidence before the judge. And no convictions to be seen. Yellow tapes, chalk stains on the crime scenes. Blood stains cry out from these Trumpanian streets. Profit over people. We don't care if they die. Fuck COVID-19. Let the fittest survive. Translate that to mean wealthy and the 1%. They say they cut us them checks, but black and brown folks still can't pay rent. In the food bank line trying to make ends meet. Trying to make it work, but the curfew ends at 9. Can't catch the bus because Lori shut down the lines. King says, a riot is the language of the unheard. The Pentecost Holy Ghost fire came down and cities burned. Maybe this is the new birth of the church we wish to see. To get us out of them pews and into the streets. A nightmare of hashtags trending, haunting me. Kendrick Lamar, won't you sing for me? Hear that bass drop and I start to believe we gonna be all right, even if we must die. Claude McKay said, let it be nobly done, fighting back for the generations to come. Lamentations lift every voice to a rising sun. James Weldon Johnson declared victory is won. Cut off my lungs, 10 minutes with his knees, crying out for mama, I can't breathe. Cut off my lungs, 10 minutes with his knees, crying out for mama, I can't breathe. Cut off my lungs, 10 minutes with his knees, crying out for mama, I can't Why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? Why have you forsaken us? How can we go on? There's a woman who's lost her child. 
and a man who's lost his way. There's a boy who's keeping it inside, and a girl who cannot pray. Why are you forsaken us? Where have you gone? Why have you forsaken us? How can we go on? We search for your face, search for your grace. We want to follow your way. Where have you gone? There's a man who says he cannot breathe, and another with a gun. There's a family who's left everything, just exiles on the run. Why have you forsaken? Search for your face, search for your grace. We want to follow your way. Why have you forsaken us? Where have you gone? There's a man forsaken on a cross. Body broken in two. There's a God. Honesty is not that popular these days in some circles. But here's the truth. Here's my truth. When events like those of the past few weeks happen, I ask myself, where are you, God? I trust that God is with us. I try to remember that God has come alongside us. But at the same time, I identify with the psalmist who sings in Psalm 10, why are you so far away, Lord? Why do you hide yourself when we are in trouble? I'm thinking, we could use some action here. Please, God, why don't you do something? Psalm 10 goes on and on about how bad things are. Finally, the psalmist sings, you will listen, O Lord, to the prayers of the lowly. You will give them courage. Wait, I'm not looking for courage. I'm looking for some direct help. But I guess instead, God wants to give us courage. No doubt I need courage. As a white man in America, I've lived long enough to know that I'm not a racist is not enough. I need the courage to confess my complicity in the system of white supremacy. I need the courage to confess 
whether I want to be or not, I am a racist. And I need the courage to commit to being anti-racist, to doing whatever it takes every single day to change what's wrong. God, this is my prayer. Give me the courage. Remember when we saw the boy washed up on the shore, the girl torn from her parents arms. Remember when we heard sixteen shots in the night, no justice for that life. We want to know where you were, we want to know where you May the God who is always and forever with us and for us fill us with hope and show us how to be love in the middle of this aching world. Could you say this with us? You are not alone. I am not alone. We are not alone. 
You are not alone. I am not alone. We are not alone. Thanks for being with us tonight. If you're looking for ways to stand up for love and justice in these times, we've included some links at the end of the credits, and we'll post these on our Facebook page as well. If you've got any recommendations, we'd love to see them in the comments. Thanks again for being with us tonight. We have much to lament, and we have much to look forward to. My hope for you is that in these coming days, that you will see and experience and feel all of this through the lens of love, strength, peace, humility, and hope. Love and peace to you. Thanks to all of you who are with us tonight. Take courage. We are not alone. A couple days ago, somebody reminded me of this Bible verse. Do not grow weary in doing good. That's my prayer for all of us this week. Peace. Hey friends, thanks for joining us once again. And as you go through your week, remember if God is for us, who can be against us? See you next time.